I'm Alfie Brown. The the countries and the internet uh, foremost alcoholic cricket enthusiast, and we are about to get on a plane. We are going to Spain. In 1982, there was still only one club in the whole country. Since then, cricket really has taken off. This is cricket in all corners, and today we are in Malaga, Spain, for the European Cricket Championships. Cricket was first played here in 1809, when the Duke of Wellington's soldiers had a day off from fighting Napoleon. Today, the countries of Europe will wage war once again. Imagine this being autumn. Mother fucking hell. This is actually excellent weather to sit down and uh, watch uh, a group of people play cricket. We've made it. The European Cricket Championships in the middle of Kartama, the Kartama Oval. And they've put on quite a spread here. There's they proper had thing. This is this is really proper. This is really proper and really exciting. I've been told there's a man called Mr. Maximo who I'm to speak to. He's the commentator who lends his voice to cricket all over Europe. My name is Vinny Sandu. I'm better known in cricket circles as Mr. Maximo. I'm the head of media at European Cricket and also I'm uh, the commentator. And I've actually commentated over 800 matches of cricket this year alone. Really? It's true. My God. Are you getting uh, cricket fatigue? I actually don't because it's so exciting. The the type of cricket is very different, it's very innovative. Ten over format was fast paced, so we're big hitting. Uh, the boundaries were brought in slightly, so it was very high scoring. And now this is the first ever international ten over matches that have been played, so it's really exciting to be a part of it. It's bringing cricket into different countries and different audiences, and I just love being a part of that story. That's fantastic, mate. You look fantastic as well. I do have a bit of a thing, which is I wear a different colour suit every day, a different colour scheme. So today is Super Thursday, so I'm Superman. Uh, inspired with my outfit today. Well, you so look brilliant. It's lucky a, audience and a lucky tailor you've got uh, yes. for, all that, for all that work. Well, the suits are getting a workout this year. This is actually my 35th week in a row commentating yeah. for the ECN. Sunday I'm off to Croatia and then from there I go to Corfu and then I'm going to Rome and then I'm going to Cyprus and then I'm going to Malta and then maybe, maybe we'll have a break uh, in December. But we'll, see. well, you deserve a snooze, I think. It's not your grandfather's cricket, it's normally what I say. You, you'll enjoy this. Yeah. At 3 o'clock, or between 3 and 3.30, any time you like, come up and just open the door up there. I'm on with Rico, and we are not phased away anything. Whenever Spain got a boundary, they would play sort of flamenco music because of Spain who got a boundary. So each team has their own sort of boundary music. So I was hoping that when Italy got a boundary, it would be like... You know? Thank God Scotland are playing. It'd be awful having to hear... It just stands there and waves goodbye to this one. It's going on holiday, this Kugelborough board. He thinks he's out, but sometimes you get a bit of luck. There's down. pressure, and you have a chance to exterminate the Terminator. Just a very warm welcome to all of you, no matter where you're watching around the world. Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo, along with 
Rico Fall and Rico, you look pretty nice, pretty in pink today. No, it's very nice. Neutral. Looks like one of those scented shirts. And he tries to do it here, but this could be trouble. He's got a long way to come, but it's going to be gone. And Hamza Salim doesn't wait to have a look. He's going to have to go second ball for a duck. And he was the hero for Spain, Spain, wasn't he? When he scored that smash in 50. Rico never done this in a year ago. But the difference, wow. one innings, mate. Oh, he's lost it. I think he's lost it in the sun. Oh, my word. What is going on here? I don't call it the Costa del Sol for nothing. The sun's been causing havoc for these players. He's really fast. Sort of here, I've got to do it. I mean, both of the team here, maybe it's because of his hand. He's trying to put himself in the areas where he's not going to be in, I'll show you. in too much play with we the ball. Can we the I daily think. run rates, please? Yesterday, we were spot on with the average, which is 11.4. So going on that, 114 would be an average score. I do yeah. think in the finals, though, you probably want to get 120 plus, I think. Uh, these are the cream of the crop. Yeah, but it, as he started going and it looked like Puma was saying no, the Puma left himself stranded and a better throw here. That's unlike anything I've ever seen. The guy is in there and he's, um, he's like conducting the orchestra whilst at the same time having to play the violin. It's, it's absolutely berserk. He's going, ah, oh, yeah, that's a good shot there, and of course he has form in that area. That's what happens when you try to exterminate the Perminator and uh, uh, camera two, can you get it? It's, it's like, he's doing everything at once. He's even on the YouTube chat. If you watch it on YouTube Live, he's chatting to you whilst he's commentating and asking about, I asked him what the average score was and he, uh, for what's par score on this wicket, and he got the par score up by calling it into the director. I don't know how or what sort of, what's happened to him that means that he isn't the most stressed out person in the world. I'm going to top the scaffolding now uh, to look at the big pitch from its uh, most spectacular vantage point. From up here, the idea of cricket in Spain doesn't seem strange at all. It makes total sense. This place has the perfect cricket climate. You could even play on Christmas Day if you wanted to replicate more English conditions. A cricket idyll hidden in the Costa del Sol. <laughs> I quite fancy staying up here all of tomorrow. A nice bottle of uh, Rioja or something and scoring it. It's something. Uh, that fills you with an almost homicidal calm when you're scoring a cricket match. First ball. It's been an absolutely incredible day. Coming in here, you can hardly believe it exists. This cricket theme park has been erected. This is it. It is finals day. It's bustling. There's a frenetic energy in the air and everybody is anxious to find out who will be the champion of Europe. a lot of international and county cricket and I you know now sort of seeing the game grow in Europe is something new something exciting and um, great atmospheres like we've got here if you live in England it's a great weekend you know people go to Prague or Paris or whatever for a city break you can put a bit of cricket in and do a city break cathedral in the morning game of cricket in the afternoon or whatever art gallery Sunday morning game of cricket in the afternoon perfect Costa del Sol Cricket Club is made up of English and... I think we've got a mix of everyone. Mix I think of everyone. I think we've got 20 different nationalities, haven't yeah, we? We have Indians, Sri Lankan, Pakistanis, yeah. Bangladesh. We have uh, Jamaicans, we have St. Lucians, we have... We've got Australians. Danish, Australians. Have you got Spani any Spanish? Spanish, no. No? <laughs> Italians have long been associated with style, romance and passion, usually in the direction of football, food or indeed the physical act of love. But I had heard tell 
of the new Italian coach, bringing this spirit to the sport of cricket. Yeah. Very nice to meet you, my pal. I'm Alfie. Uh, and you're called Alessandro. Alessandro. Uh, very, very good. Team manager. How gorgeous. You look like the. You look like everything I want an Italian coach to be. You look like the archetypal Italian coach. Gorgeous suit, shorts, and uh, one, uh, all you need is a cigarette. And then you'll look like, I have some. Oh, yeah, great. Then you'll look like exactly like. Well, my mother doesn't like you. Well, no, it's not very good for you, but it is very cool. You are very thankful to everyone they support us and they cheers for us i'm very thankful to everyone or especially spanish people and Sp uh, the the committee which uh, create a great platform for the cricket players first time i play for italian cricket team i am from four years in italia so i'm yeah. new in italy and it's my first experience with uh, and yes, you, 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 you walked all the way from Pakistan to, to Brescia. Pakistan to Italy. Islamabad to no, Brescia? No, from uh, Balochistan to Italy. Balochistan. So I want to start in the game. I, I want to go to the gym and start a cricket battle. We want to win next time, so that's why I work hard more than you. What aspect of your game would you hone in on that you would like to improve? Fitness. Fitness? You walked all the way from fucking Pakistan? No, How but... How uh, it possibly but, be? <laughs> The final was about to begin, but first we were invited out onto the pitch so I could suffer the indignity of having my lack of pace measured by the state-of-the-art Hawkeye technology. As long as I break the speed limit in Islington, uh, I'll be happy with that. So basically what it's doing is it's detecting, tracking the ball in both these cameras and then basically bringing the result together. It ball tracks, it gives you speed, swing, all that kind of stuff, so just from two phone cameras. Yeah, phones are just getting so powerful. Uh, two iPhone 12s can do basically anything. I'm not worried, I'm just a, a wee bit tentative about humiliation. What's that, Vinny? Ready? <laughs> 58.9. Wow. Oh, oh, that's funny. Next 68.9 kilometers an hour. That's slower than Shane Warne, who waddles. He waddles to the crease. But we have nothing like this in Italy, so you should like learn from the from this tournament. Now, now we we lack the social aspect of cricket. Mm -hmm. I think personally, if you want to get Italians involved, in, get them involved in uh, in cricket, we need them to also provide uh, a good. Uh, like a uh, happy day outside. If you provide them uh, like something like this, social cricket, maybe I'll get fired after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you couldn't be fired for just... Uh... I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I do this for free. <laughs> Person, I'm a cricket person, but I always try and get in the mind of someone that isn't a cricket person and yeah. someone that has these these preconceptions about uh, about what cricket is and yeah. what it isn't. And to show people here who you said, I never really understood cricket, but now I've watched some of these games, I get it and I love it. Yeah. I think that's how you can hook people in. And I think that is, in particular, the, one of the most special things we're doing is we're, we're spreading the game uh, across, across regions and audiences that maybe haven't found cricket particularly exciting before. It is the final, it is England, it is Belgium, and we're all very excited to find out who's going to be the winner of the European Cricket Championship. And look, they even gave me a match ball. Final time, well it's hard to believe, this is the 96th match of the first ever Dream 11 European Championship. And uh, also, I remember to go to the boss, but first I'm here with some of the crowd, and how are you guys enjoying it? How long have you had practice?
time to practice as a team before you came out? Um, we came together at, what was it, Sunday morning at Heathrow Airport. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Most of the guys have played, um, either like second team cricket or there or thereabouts first class cricket. So there aren't any guys that haven't been involved in a setup, and I think that was a big thing. You're going away for two weeks with guys, you want to make sure they're all pretty aware of expectations and standards and know how to behave themselves. And that was a big criteria, I think, for the staff. How do you get picked in the team? Um, performances over the last year or two. Um, you also, an email, kind of a blanket email, went out to all the coaches of the minor county sides um, and said that if anyone's interested, can we have yeah. all the names? It might have been 90 names, something like that, off the top of my head. And then they selected it down to 16, 18, something like that, and then they cut it down again. Are you confident you're going to win? That's the plan. We've been good so far. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Good luck, mate. No, I appreciate it. Thank I you. Appreciate it. You're not much between these teams. Anything can happen. Hey. I'm going to have to ask the crowd, who do you guys think is going to win the final? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I have no idea. Michael McCann is going to be the boss. It's going to be a huge run. The biggest match of the year. Let's go. Open the unit now. Get the boss. Get the boss. who chops down, it comes off his body, just rolls back. And one bail is removed, and so is Ali Raza. 148 will be the final score. I'm exceptionally excited about the prospect of a Belgian and Ali Raza victory. And I think I'm in a minority here amongst the English populace of the Costa del Sol. There's Ward on strike. And he starts with six, and the crowd goes wild. Left-hander, left-hander. And well, he put this one with the rest, because that's double sixes. And it's three, and you know it. Have you ever seen the first three balls of the match hit for six? Well, you have now. Oh, it's match all, three in a row. England won the thing and, and good for them but for me the most inspiring part of all of this was watching the Belgians who had just lost the final and the Italians who had got knocked out yesterday coming together partying dancing and generally going berserk in the joy celebrating together in what we'd all just been a part of it's clear that cricket is spreading to all corners of Europe and who knows who the champion will be next year.